We were told by the executive director of the new Harvard Libraries that there would be a smaller workforce, can I get a boo? And that this would be accomplished through voluntary and involuntary job cuts. Are we okay with that, sisters and brothers? And I just want to say thank you and a special thank you to all the students, graduate students and undergraduates that I see in the crowd today. Can I get a big hand for our student friends? And the reason they're out here, not just because they care about our jobs, which we appreciate very much, but because they care about the quality of research at this institution. And they know that the amount of outsourcing, automation, over-reliance on harried student workers, they know what that's doing to the libraries, and it's not anything good. Hey, Randy. And uh, just among some of the problems that have been created, they include 10,000 books being sent out to the Harvard Depository. That's about $370,000 worth of books without any cataloging. So they bought all these materials, put them in a box, and sent them to a warehouse where they'll never be heard from again. Does that sound like an efficient use of Harvard's resources? No! I didn't think so. All right, without further ado, we've got uh, a great program for you today. A lot of speakers on deck. And uh, I just want to give a uh, shout out to our sound man, Freeman Z, a.k.a. Jeff. Big hand, everybody. Yeah. Doing our fabulous sound system today. And first on our speakers list, from the Harvard Union of Clerical and Technical Workers, give it up for Desiree Goodwin, everybody. Yeah. Greetings, everyone. Thank you for joining us and helping us to shape the world you will inherit. A world where the workers who have helped to make Harvard great will be treated as valued partners and collaborators and not as a financial burden to be discarded in the new world order. There is a misconceived notion that librarians are opposed to change. Nothing could be further from the truth. In the 20 plus years I have worked in my field, my colleagues and I have enthusiastically embraced change, sweeping changes that help improve access to information. We have barcoded hundreds of thousands of books and created millions of online cataloging records. We have gained expertise in retrieving information from online databases and teaching the community to maximize the use of these resources. In the course of our jobs, we continually update our skills and add to the databases and correct mistakes and misinformation in these databases while maintaining and adding to the physical collections. There is a continually expanding electronic knowledge base. The sheer abundance of information can be very difficult to navigate for the average library user. Librarians and library workers make it our business to locate these resources so that the academic community can focus on learning, studying, and creating. We then maintain, preserve, and provide access to the body of knowledge you create. What we oppose is being informed that a primary focus of the new library will be reducing an unspecified number or percentage of staff and then being given very little information about the plan. No matter how many questions we ask or how many discussions we have with a new leadership. This is an insult to our intelligence and our dignity. We sit in meetings reviewing architectural plans for renovation, not knowing whether or not we will actually be working in these new renovated spaces. If Harvard still exists as a physical place where real students can come to take classes on campus with real professors who are experts in their fields, then the students and scholars should still be able to consult real librarians 
for assistance on their most difficult research questions. We are still a real, not a virtual community. The wealthiest university in the Ivy League should not be cutting corners at the expense of its hardworking, dedicated employees to create a modern library. That's right. We have the skill, knowledge, and ability to, and vision to create a new and better library that works for everyone, the students, the faculty, and the workers. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Desiree. That was great. I'd like to read a message of solidarity now, and this comes from our brothers and sisters in Unite Here in the Dining Hall Workers Union. And this, this comes up from Ed Childs, who's the chief shop steward in that union. Give it up for Ed Childs. Everybody knows Ed. Here's the message to the Harvard community. The Dining Hall workers support this campaign to better the Harvard education system. We are all faced with huge problems for environmental, global climate warming, economic disasters, and devastating wars. In this crisis, better education systems are a must, which means better and bigger libraries. Societies run on education, and education systems run on food, libraries, students, faculty, buildings, and everyone that is needed to maintain them. So stop cutting programs that are vital for our schools to help move society forward. Yeah. All education is vital from public schools to the top schools. Harvard is one of the top, and every worker, student, and faculty are immensely proud of that. But today, Harvard management is no longer in the task of developing education to the highest level. Harvard now seems to be a treasure chest for Goldman Sachs and their kind to loot from. They are nothing but modern day pirates. Yeah. Uh, pirates don't take kindly to us touching their loot. So every student, faculty, and worker on campus that does something at Harvard to make the world a better place is bad for their loot. But every layoff and program cut is money for these pirates. This has to be stopped. We need advances in education. We need bigger and better libraries. We need sustainable food in the dining halls. We need to expand our sciences and medical facilities. We don't need holes in the ground in Alston, Brighton, and we don't need these Goldman Sachs pirates. For a better world, expand the libraries. Ed Childs for the Stewards Committee of Harvard Dining Hall Workers Unite here, Local 26. They say lay off. We they say back off. They say lay off. We say back off. They say lay off. We say back off. That's right. Now I'd like to bring up a Harvard alum who's good enough, who's being good enough to share his thoughts today. So I want everyone please to welcome Sue Bryant. Woo!